This tutorial will be a crocheted necklace made out of little round medallions. It will be a fun project to make for your kids or get them involved teaching them how to crochet. I will be using two colors of yarn and a size G 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. We will start by attaching a slip knot to the crochet hook. Take the loose end, wrap it over the main strand. Now you have a loop. Take the loop, wrap it over the main strand. Put your hook below the center strand, back up the opposite side. This creates the slip knot. We will work a chain four. One, two, three, four. Join with the beginning chain. Joining is putting your hook through the first chain. Wrap the yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook. You have joined your chain into a ring. We will work a chain one. That will not count as a stitch. We will be working 14 half double crochet through the ring. And I'm going right around through the center of the chain. That's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm going to join with the beginning stitch, putting my hook below the two loops, wrap the yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook. Round two, we will be working 16 single crochet right over the half double crochet. I am working right over the previous round and this is going to make it thick. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 16. I'm going to join with the beginning stitch, putting my hook below the two loops, wrap the yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook. We have completed our medallion. Now I did crochet over this beginning tail and it did get in the way a little bit, but you can decide if you want to crochet over it or just leave it. You may also want to use some type of marker to mark your first stitch. I was able to know because of the color of the yarn, so I remembered it was this darker maroon color where I started, so I could see when I got back around to the beginning. If you are using the same color, you may want something to show your first stitch. I'm going to wrap the yarn over, pull through, and I'm going to cut off a little bit. We'll be using this to sew them together later. I'm going to attach my yarn in a different place and I'm putting my hook below the two loops, picking up my new color, pulling it through, and we are working a slip stitch all the way around. And this is just an extra effect that I liked. You can still use the medallions without adding this third round. That's up to you if you want to do it or not. This is some different options, and I'm working a slip stitch all the way around, and I'm working it loose. I'm putting my hook below the top of the stitch, picking up the yarn on the back side, and then pulling it through. And you don't want to make it too tight, or it may start to pull up. So just work it kind of loose. Although pulling up could be another effect or another technique to make it a little different. So that's 
something to keep in mind if you want to experiment. I'm back around to the beginning. Now I'm going to cut the yarn and pull it through. And then what I do is then put my hook through the center of this very first stitch and then wrap the yarn over and then pull it through to the back side. And then we have an even edging all the way around. Now I'm going to make a couple of knots here, or I should say one knot. like that. Now I'm going to sew these extra tails in. And I'm sewing them between the stitches right here like this. And then cut off the yarn. I'm going to sew in this other one same way, and then cut off the yarn. Now I'm going to take these two right sides facing like this. This is the front, and this is the back, and I'm going to have them facing each other like this. Now I'm going to sew them together through these back stitches. And I'm going to do just a couple of loops, maybe three or four. I'm going to make a knot. And before I make the knot, I do want to open it up and make sure that they look all right. And that does look pretty good. This is what it looks like on the back, and this is the front. And if you have little parts bulging out like that, you can adjust your loops and then push it down in there. Take your crochet hook and put it in here like that. And that part will go back into the inside like that. Sometimes the first round will bulge out a little bit, so but that's all right, you can fix that up just like that. I'm going to make a knot. And I'm going to weave the strand of yarn between the stitches just like this. And then Cut off the yarn. We will be attaching one more medallion the same way. I'm starting off with right sides facing, working in these back loops. I'm going to lay it down, and that looks pretty good. This is what it looks like on the back. And I'm going to make a couple knots to secure. Now I'm going to hide the tail between the stitches just like that, and then cut off the extra yarn. I will be doing the same thing with the three remaining medallions. This segment will be the large medallion at the bottom center of the necklace. I'm attaching a slip knot to the crochet hook. We will work a chain of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Join with the beginning chain. 
we will be working a total of 25 double crochet. I'm starting with a chain one, that's my step up, working right around the chain. That's stitch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now you can take and adjust these on around. Sometimes they may get bunched up and close together so you can even them up. We have five more double crochet to make. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We will join with the beginning stitch, putting our hook below these loops here at the top of the stitch, wrap the yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook. We are going to cut the yarn at this time. We will not be going over the stitches with a large medallion. I'm going to cut off the tail and then give it a tug. Now I crocheted right over my tail so I'm going to cut it off. We're going to be working a slip stitch the same way we did on the smaller medallions and I'm attaching the yarn. I'm just looping it over like this and pulling it through. I'm working a slip stitch in the next stitch making it somewhat loose. I will be working in increments of five. That's stitch one, two, three, four. With stitch five, we're going to be dropping down through the center and working an extended slip stitch. I'm putting my hook below the two loops, wrap the yarn over, and pull through. We will work four more stitches, one, two, three, four. Now with the fifth stitch, we are dropping down into the center, working an extended stitch, and then completing just like that. We're working four slip stitches, that's one, two, three, Four, working an extended stitch through the center. This is stitch five. Now we're working one, two, three, four. This is stitch Five, which is the extended stitch. One, two, three, four. Now we're working our last extended stitch. We're around to the beginning. This is stitch five. We end with five dropped stitches down through the center. Now I'm going to Cut the yarn. I'm cutting off a little bit extra. I may need it for sewing. And I'm going to attach it through the center of this next stitch, like that. And then it makes all the stitches, it gives them an even look. Now, what I want to do is flip these around because there are no knots, and I want to secure them. 
So I'm going to make a couple of knots. Just like that. And that completes our center medallion. Then when I get the other side complete, we will sew them together. I have completed my two sides and I'm going to take and align them right about here on each side. And you can see that these don't bend very good. So if you wanted to make this out of a necklace by itself, you would have to adjust the positioning of each individual medallion so it will follow around into a nice shape. And so this is why I have to strategically place these around this larger medallion. I'm going to take and sew this on in place. I'm going to flip it over like this. And I'm still sewing through the back stitches. And I'm only going to attach maybe two to four times. It does not have to be a lot. I'm going to make a little knot here. I'm going to make a second knot. And then I'm going to weave this between the stitches on the back side. And then cut off the extra yarn. Now I have one side in place. I'm going to do the same thing with this other side. I'm going to align this right about here. to make a knot and then I'm going to weave it back here between these stitches just like this and this is what we have completed so far I'm going to take this tail and sew it in at this time I'm going to make a little knot here just to make sure everything stays in place. And then weave it between the stitches. I have three strands of yarn here. I'm going to be making the twisted cord. The strands are approximately 24 inches long. You may want to make them a little bit longer you can adjust the size upon completion. This is the cord where you just twist and twist and twist. You keep twisting and then hold on to this end and hope it doesn't fly out of your hand. I've had that happen a few times. And then I have to start all over again. But you keep twisting and twisting and twisting. twisting and I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Now this is what I have and you can see how it rolls up by itself and this is what we're looking for. But before I let that happen I want to match up these two ends first like that and then now I'll let go of it and then it can roll up like that. And this is going to be the part that I add around here and so this will give you an idea. You can try at this point to fit it over your head, your child's head, or whoever this is for to see if it's going to fit. And then if it doesn't fit, you may want to make it a little longer. I just tried this over my head and it does fit. And you can see the cord has a little bit of stretch to it. So, And these are going to have a little bit of stretch as well. Now I'm going to temporarily secure these in place because I don't want them coming apart. And I made a knot on my other one and it made it kind of bulky and I didn't like the bulkiness to it. 
So I'm just going to tie this in place like this. And then I'm going to cut this off. When I say that I made a knot on my other one, this is what I did. I wrapped it around and through like this. And then you can see it creates this big bulky knot. And I was not fond of that. And we need to sew this on to the back side, and so this is going to make it less bulky. Now I've threaded my tapestry needle, and I'm going to run it through here, up towards the top up here like this. I don't want to pull it all the way through, so I'm going to make a little knot right here, and hope it stays in place, just like that. And now I'm going to cut off some of this excess. And I'm going to be sewing this in place. And I'm not going around to the front. I'm just going through these back stitches here. And I'm going to loop right through the center to keep it in place. And I'm going to continue sewing until we have something that looks somewhat nice and neat. doesn't have to be perfect, but something that looks semi-neat here and keeps everything in place so it doesn't come apart. I'm going to go back up here one more time and I want to sew through the cord one more time. Now I'm going to make a knot here and now I'm going to run it between the stitches like this. and then cut off the yarn. Now we have one side complete. I'm going to do the same thing with this other side. And I did notice with this one, when I was pulling on the back side here, I may have pulled it too tight because it is taking on a little oval shape. That may be something you want to keep in mind and I'm going to try to avoid doing that with this one. I'm going to start up here similar to the other side. I'm going to make a little knot right here. I want to align this in place. I'm going to go over this first time Now this next time I'm going to go through the center of all these strands. And this one's a little bit easier to do than the other one because we're not dealing with the loose ends as we did on the other side. pretty good. I'm going to make a knot and then make a second knot. And then weave it between the strands of yarn. And that completes the necklace. I am including two more crochet projects that will be a great way to keep your kids entertained throughout the summer. One is a crochet bracelet with pony beads. The other is an I-cord friendship bracelet.
The annotation link will take you to each video. If you are new to Crochet Geek, you will want to hit the subscribe button. This is so you can receive updates for new crochet tutorials. Please remember to rate the video, leave a comment, and share with your friends. You can also follow me on Google Plus and share pictures to my crochet community. Today I shared a post on my page of some crochet items I made early on when I was first learning how to crochet. It was some things I'd made for my sister as gifts. One of them was a little crochet dress made out of thread. My sister reminded me that I had told her to use the stuff, and my thinking behind that was, at the time I'd often hear people say, oh, that's too pretty to use. I was very pleased to hear that she did use the items I gave to her. Is that something the rest of you hear, or is that old-fashioned thinking on my part now? I know over the years I've used plenty of my own doilies, and they have lots of holes in them to show for it, where I've taken and washed them, and They've just kind of got worn. My kids played with them, put them on their heads, used them as capes. Sometimes handmade gifts can be hit and miss, so you just never know. Now that this one is complete, what will be your next crochet project? And if you happen to listen all the way to the end, please leave a comment and let me know. I have no idea if anyone is listening this far into the video. Thank you.